that we all have a life. That we too live a normal life, just like everyone else. Then we have good days, and we have bad days. That some days, you know, we look more like a Christian, you know, like the typical stereotype Christian that, oh, gets down on their knees and prays like this, because if we pray like this, they'll think we're all up. <laughs> no, it really doesn't matter, you know, what it looks like on the outward. What matters is what's inside. You know, and some days I don't feel like a Christian. Some days I feel like a nut. Some days I don't, you know. Some days it's not about feelings, but <clears throat> really it's about your personal relationship with God as you go through your day. Like, what happens when you go into the bathroom, you know, and you're in an apartment upstairs and you crank on the hot water because you know that, you know, you're going to get that bathtub nice and hot. So, like any other typical male, wise, older man, you turn the water on. And you go over and turn the computer on. And you go outside, you know, you say a prayer, you come back in, you know, and you kind of get sidetracked with the computer a little bit. And then you get things set up, the camera, kind of getting things organized for your day. And you go in the bedroom and... Open the blinds to let the sun in, and you get the coffee started, and you kind of work on things one after another, and you get your books all ready <clears throat> for your devotionals, and you go, oh my gosh, what about the water? And you run back in the bathroom, and you see, oh no, it's overflowing. <laughs> you saw he overflowed the tub. I mean, <laughs> hey, you got joy, don't you? You got peace. You got God. So what's the story? Do circumstances ruin your day and make you go off on a tangent and like, oh, man, I just rah, raka, 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 waka, waka, waka. Or do you praise the Lord and you grab the clothes out of the dirty clothes and you throw them down on the floor to sop up the water and then you let the plug out of the tub, you know, and you let the water go down. And you start your dryer, you know, and you throw towels in there that you just soaked full of water. And you throw down some more towels to soak up the water. And you hope that downstairs didn't get drained on. <laughs> For me, fortunately, overflowing the tub is a rare occasion. Every now and then I have done it. But for the most part, life was meant to be lived. It's not a question of everything's going to be perfect in your life. It's not a question of does God not love me or why did he allow it to happen or even how could a God of love cause my tub to overflow? I mean, after all, I'm a Christian. My bathtub doesn't overflow. Or does it? You see, Turning on the bathtub was my choice. I could have turned it on and sat there and waited and watched and said, hmm, how long does it take a bathtub to fill? About as long as it takes watching the boil water, watch, about as long, <laughs> about as long as it takes to watch water boil. Hey, we've all done that, haven't we? Hurry up, put it in the microwave, put it out there, put salt in it, something, make it boil faster. But life isn't one of ignoring what's going on, but one of choosing to involve God in your life, to allowing God to be personal to your life, to sharing with him the joy of life and the experience of living it, because God created you to have fellowship with him. He didn't make you in such a way that, oh no, you have to live a perfect life, you know, you can't, you can't ever be homeless, not as a Christian, not as a born again, right on, doing the right thing, Christian is never homeless. Foxes have holes, birds have their nests, yet nowhere has the Son of Man to lay his head. Oh no, Christians never get sick. 
We believe in the doctrine of always healthy. You eat right, you sleep right, you do right, you are right. No, that's not what God said. You see, God is about the reality of knowing who you trust for your life. That, hey, God knew my bathtub was going to overflow, and he knew I wasn't going to worry about it. <laughs> So he made sure that it just stayed right where it's supposed to so that I could sop it up and move right on and maybe do something a little bit different. He uses the opportunities of life to relate to us in a way that we can turn it around and understand something positive in a way that would cause us to trust in him more than trusting in ourselves. Like, for me, maybe next time, Maybe I won't turn on the water first and go run off and do my own thing. Maybe I'll involve God in the water, you know, and say, Lord, you know, I'm going to take a shower today. <laughs> and we're just going to spend some time together, you know. I'm going to do a scrub-a-dub-dub, -dub, you know, and be like one man in a tub, you know. And instead of flowing it up, you know, and laying there, I'm just going to shower down, you know, and get cleaned up. And that's probably what I'll do as soon as I'm done with this one. Devotion. But... God doesn't hold it against us for our sins that we commit. He doesn't hold us against us for our accidents we do or our mistakes we made. He doesn't come at us and say, Oh man, how could you be so dumb? I mean, what kind of idiot would let their bathtub overflow? I don't know. This idiot. <laughs> so... If God <clears throat> doesn't hold us accountable as idiots for uh, overflowing bathtubs, do you think he holds us accountable for being idiots about all of our doctrinal differences and our theologies that sometimes maybe we don't completely have the right picture about who God is? Maybe <clears throat> whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, Jesus, shall be saved because God understands their heart more than he understands or allows for the outward actions that sometimes don't make much sense. So the next time that we want to beat up on somebody, you know, that you want to, ah, ah, oh, oh, that guy just keeps failing. Well, isn't there something in your day that you boo-booed today? <laughs> I like to tease my wife because... When it came to areas of theology or personal relationship with God in the Bible, I wasn't wrong when it came to her questions or her understanding and her point of view because she would always bring up these things that were just normal, baby Christian or carnal Christian or whatever you want to call it, um, <clears throat> ideas or thoughts that I could say, no, that's not true. And she'd go, well, yeah, it is. I, I heard it in church, or I heard this, or I did. You know, I said, no, it's not. And then she'd look it up in the Bible and go, you're always right. <laughs> said, well, no, I'm not right. It's God will give you the right way of approaching it. Now, how you put it into place is your choice. And I had to tell her constantly, it's not me. It's just Holy Spirit. I'm used to the scriptures. I understand what's in there and what's not in there. You know, and sometimes people say things are there that really aren't. <laughs> They make it up, you know, and make it up as they go along. But we need to be honest with ourselves first, because we need to stand naked, as it were, before God and go, hey, God didn't cause the bathtub to overflow. God didn't cause the church to divide itself into many parts. God didn't cause all these things to happen, but he allows them so that we can learn things from that experience. And if we do, then we've chosen to apply the grace of God to our lives, that we might be able to, as we have received grace to be forgiven for the errors and the boo-boos we do, that likewise we would do the same for someone else. I mean, I'm sure you know somebody that's sinned and made a boo-boo, you know, or a mistake. And frankly, Jesus already paid for it. He's already died for their sin. He's already 
redeemed them as far as God is concerned. So the reality is, is are we judging them according to the grace of God we've been given? Or are we judging them according to our own righteousness that is being imputed to us but hasn't been given to us yet? Because you see, if we set ourselves up as a righteous judge, that measure of righteousness is how we're going to be judged. I don't want to be there. I don't want to go there. I want to be merciful to those that need mercy because I know that daily I may not overflow the bathtub, but there'll be some days where I'm going to make boo-boos just as big as that or as little. Wipe the slate. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto things which are before, I press toward the mark. Philippians 3, 13, 14. Forget the past. Remember only its glad days. Wipe the slate of your remembrance with love, which will erase all that is not confirmed in love. You must forget your failures, your failures and those of others. Wipe them out of the book of your remembrance. I did not die upon the cross for man to bear the burden of his sins himself, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. I died for all sin. If you forget not the sin of others, and I bear them, then you should add to my sorrows. So, really, as God speaks to us in God Calling, I think the reality of having this opportunity to share in some of the goofiness that goes on in my life, you know, and some of the joys of, you know, making things that I enjoy, you know, my, my little patio comes from outside on the deck to inside. You know, if I had a extended cord long enough, I'd probably have you sitting over here, which I may still do. <laughs> but what I find true is that Jesus wants to be with you. He doesn't like being around you if you're, you know, a nitpicker or you're going after somebody or you're attacking people that he wants to involve with you in fellowship with him. You see, because Jesus and you make up one part of the body of Christ. It's kind of neat, you know. It's like, wow, you know, there they are. You know, you got the Lord Jesus and you got the person. But then Jesus says, hey, I'm going to bring in this other guy, uh, this, this tax collector. And Peter goes, ah, man, I don't have nothing to do with those tax collectors. Ah, uh, uh. I said, man, they disgusting. Well, I think in modern days, we have the same type of attitude. There are people you just don't want to be around that maybe God wants you to involve with him, forgiving their sin as your sin has been forgiven you. Because as you find that's true, then by the same grace that you extend to others, that grace is multiplied unto you because he giveth more grace.